In these bleak times, I'm going to deviate a little bit from my usual scary science stories, at least according to my friends, and talk about a piece of good news in medicine. If everything goes well, the medical community might actually have two new cures for sickle cell disease applicable to everyone who has the disease. This is a revolutionary breakthrough to treat a disease that has long plagued people living in tropical regions, including tribes in India. Even today, millions suffer from this disease that turns our red blood cells into a crescent shape or a sickle shape, eventually killing the person who has the disease somewhere between 20 and 60 years of age. Currently, the US FDA are in the process of reviewing two therapies. One uses CRISPR and is expected to be available by December, and the other one should be available next year. This is a big deal because so far, the disease does not have a definitive cure that could apply to everyone, although there are treatments available. But this could change by the end of this year. What exactly is sickle cell disease? Sickle cell disease is what causes sickle cell anemia, which we commonly hear about, and it is a genetically inherited disease. It evolved as a response to malaria that has affected people in sub-Saharan Africa for generations and millennia. A person with sickle cell disease has red bloods that are deformed and are in the shape of a sickle. Symptoms for this appear in the form of short episodes called crises and they are flashes of excruciating pain. Diagnosis for sickle cell disease is done through a blood test and treatments for it include blood transfusion, IV fluid intake, folic acid, penicillin and pain medication among the more common cases and can also lead to severe infections, strokes, bone and kidney necrosis, kidney failure, hypertension and cardiac issues among the more severe cases. So far, the only available cure is a bone marrow transplant, which helps produce newer and healthier blood cells. But only some people are eligible for this due to lack of suitable bone marrow donors. At this point, now enters the beast CRISPR. CRISPR is used where there are mutations in identified genes that can be genetically edited. So how do the genes work? The disease occurs when a fetus inherits two abnormal copies of the beta globin or HBB gene, which is responsible for the production of hemoglobin. A person with a single copy of abnormal cells inherited from one parent but not the other does not have the disease, but they do carry the genetic mutation that they can then pass down to their future generations. This mutation evolved as a means to protect the body against malaria in sub-Saharan Africa, where the disease is most prominent even today. It occurs mostly in tropical regions, including Central and South Asia. People who have had ancestors living in Sub-Saharan Africa are also at a higher risk of inheriting the disease, no matter where they live now. Genetic involvement today means a potential CRISPR therapeutic from private American biopharma companies. The treatment expected to be approved first is called Exacel and is made by Vertex Pharmaceuticals. It utilizes the CRISPR gene editing technique and reverses the mutation that causes the disease. The genetic mutation is simply switched off. For the process, stem cells are used. Stem cells are like a template cell that can evolve into specialized cell. But at a stage even earlier in cell division, is pluripotent stem cells, which are template cells that can grow into any other cell in the body. Thus, they can grow into healthy red blood cells as well. So such stem cells are removed from a patient's body and edited in the lab using CRISPR. We know that CRISPR is a technique by which a part of our genetic code can be spliced and edited. Here, CRISPR allows the researchers to remove the genetic mutation that leads to the production of deformed cells, resulting in subsequent production of healthy red blood cells. These edited stem cells are transplanted back into patients. This is not an easy process at all, and patients still have to undergo extensive and painful chemotherapy to be able to receive these edited cells in their body. But once those cells are in, 
they lead to future production of healthy red blood cells and problem solved. Since this genetic edit is a permanent change to a person's DNA, it is a one-time treatment and no donor is required. Vertex has stated that 46 people had been enrolled in its trials and with 30 patients who had follow-ups for up to two years, none were hospitalized for pain or disease. However, the FDA extends its review and research to finding unintended consequences of genetic changes before a drug or treatment can be approved. And that is what they're checking right now. We will know the results of this review in December. The second therapy expected to be reviewed in December is also a gene therapy, but it does not utilize CRISPR. It is called LovoCell and it is produced by the company Bluebird Bio. This is also a one-time gene therapy where individuals with the disease will receive an additional functional gene that can produce anti-sickling adult hemoglobin. So the gene helps produce red blood cells which have properties that prevent them from deforming and thus are healthy red blood cells. Results from trials by the company on 36 patients with an average of 32 months of follow-up show safety and efficacy and no serious problems. This trial also had six patients with six or more years of follow-up, which is the longest duration of follow-up for any therapy for sickle cell. If reviewed in December and approved, this therapy will be available next year. Having these two therapies is a really big deal. Sickle cell disease affects millions of people globally. It affects descendants of people in Africa, it affects South America, and it even affects Indians. CRISPR is truly a medical miracle, and no wonder it won a well-deserved Nobel. I shall also link below a detailed video we had done earlier on CRISPR after the Nobel win that explains exactly how these genetic scissors work. Since the advent of CRISPR, we are seeing a rapid growth in therapeutics, although costs are still prohibitively high. This might not be the case in future, but for now they are. Both these gene therapies are expected to cost more than the bone marrow transplant and blood transfusion, which today on average costs 1.7 million US dollars.